All right, some of you are gonna get this question just by reading it and understanding what a ratio is. So let's let's take a look and I'll, I'll, I'll do that and then we'll explain it in more detail. For the values of j and k, uh, the ratio of j to k is 11 to 12. If j is multiplied by 17, what is k multiplied by in order to maintain the same ratio? Well, if you understand what a ratio is, it's just 17. And the reason is that that's the whole point of ratio is it's a fraction. And so when you make the fraction go bigger or smaller, you gotta be even about it. So if we multiply J by 17, we're gonna multiply K by 17 as well. So to show you what that really means here, let's create, uh, let's use this first bit here to actually create a ratio to start. So J to K, we can write that as a fraction, J on the top, K on the bottom, uh, is equal to 11 to 12, right? So that's that's basically what it means. So if j is multiplied by 17, what is multiplied? What is k multiplied in order to maintain the same ratio? So the easiest thing to kind of do here is just pretend that j is 11 and k is 12. They don't have to be, but no matter what they are, they're gonna still kind of reduce to that, right? It could be the case that j is 22, in which case k would be 24, right? 11 times 2 is 22, and uh, 12 times 2 is 24. So 22 divided by 24 reduces to the same fraction, 11 divided by 12. So the same thing is going to happen here. We can just then create, using these numbers, new versions, right? Let's multiply that by 17 on both sides. Uh, or actually, you know what? Let's only multiply it by j by 17. Let's pretend we don't know, right? So this is going to be multiplied by... Um, X here, let's do that. Um, so on the top, 11 times 17, I don't know that in my head, so we're gonna just get that out of the calculator, that's 187. And so what they're really asking then is K times what will preserve this ratio? So now I'm looking here, right? I've got the ratio itself, 11 to 12, and I have a value for J that I made up and multiply by 17 as instructed. And then my value for K, uh, we need to preserve this ratio. So, um, oh, actually we should put K in as 12 here. So that way we have the same ratio. So 12 X is what it should be. Um, and now we would just, if this were more complicated math, we would just kind of cross multiply and divide. So I would do uh, 11 times 12 X. So 11 times 12 is 132 X and then 12, times uh, 187, right, we're gonna go this way, is 2,244, divide both sides by 132, uh, divide by 132 is, what do you know, 17. There's our proof. Because what we're doing is we're multiplying and dividing, so there's a lot of canceling out, and so in order for this to work, the, the ratio is going to have to stay the same on both the top and the bottom. And so this is just kind of like a fundamental principle of how fractions work. Think about when we add fractions together, we always need to get common denominators, right? But remember what we, we do to get those common denominators. We multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction by the same number. And that allows us to preserve the ratio, to preserve the same value of that fraction. It'll look different. The numbers on the top and the bottom will be overall bigger, but the relationship between those numbers is consistent. So hopefully you kind of understand that intuitively, but if you don't, notice what we did here is basically the arithmetize strategy to give ourselves some values of J and K that we can actually multiply by 17 so that we can prove it. Uh, it's always there in the background if we need to, we can, you know, if we have variables that they're asking us to change, sometimes the best way to just truly be sure is to actually put some numbers into those variables and then change those numbers according to the rules. It may be more tedious, but it, it might just save you with the points and that might be better than risking the points here and then having trouble with harder questions later. You do wanna get as many points in the early parts of the modules as possible.